sorry, girl, but if he can't pay, he can't stay. No room for stragglers at this inn, especially those who reek of human. Now, get out before I start losing customers. Seeing a human in a demi-human tavern ain't exactly good for business. Look, I don't care if you've been thrown out by your human family. We demi-humans have enough problems of our own without taking on human issues to boot. Now, get out, or I'll call over Cerberus. And believe me, who don't want an encounter with that particular bouncer? <clears throat> oh, excuse me. But I couldn't help overhearing part of your conversation from my spot. Oh, Valentine, my apologies. I was just sending this human girl on her way. She seems to think we demi-humans give out charity like humans give out candy on Halloween. Now go on, girl, and find someone else to help with your problems. Now, now, Avna. We demi-humans know exactly what it feels like to be thrown to the curb, so to speak. Given the short end of the stick, rather. When the interrogation process was in its infancy, Many of us were in the same situation as this girl. Surely you have a bit of empathy for this human, given what we've all been through? Myself personally, sir, of course. However, having a human in the establishment don't bode well for business, if you know what I mean. There was an incident last month that nearly lost me my license. Ah, uh, yes. I remember. The human who thought he could outdrink a dwarf. <laughs> Although, I'm sorry it caused you trouble. It was just an interesting night. Now, <clears throat> girl, what is your name? Ah, very lovely. I am Valentine, a Lamia elder. And one of the first to be sent to work on the human and demi-human interrogation process. I've been in your human world for... Oh, about two years now, I'd say. You had said something about being thrown out of your home. May I ask why? Truly? Your family thinks you're... part demi-human? How? Yes, of course. I understand it may be something you not wish to speak about in public. And as for Avna, it's probably not wise for you to loiter here too long. It could stir up problems. Would you be interested in staying with me in my home for the evening? I have plenty of room, and Avna can vouch, I am a gentle beast, right, my good man? Of course, Mr. Valentine. Having you here to help us understand humans and some of them old habits has been invaluable, to say the least. I've never even seen him look at a human sideways. You can trust him, girl. Yes? Good. Very well. Then it's settled. Do you have any bags to carry? I was on my way out anyway. So if you have... Oh, just the backpack then? Alright. Avna, here's the money for my tab. I'll probably see you in a week or so. Try not to get your license pulled in the meantime. Of course. Have yourself a good evening. And miss, my apologies for the previous attitude. I hope you can understand the situation. If you're in the neighborhood again, which, mind you, I don't recommend. If you are, there's a drink on the house waiting for you. That's better, Avna. Nice to see you still carry some empathy around in that shape-shifting head of yours. Oi, right, now, no need to be giving away me secrets to every human in earshot. Well, right now it's just you, miss, but still. <laughs> oh, Evna, you're just too easy to mess with sometimes. Calm down. 
we will be going now. Have a good evening. And please stay out of trouble. Sir. Miss. My dear, are you alright? You haven't said a word the entire time we've been heading to my home. Are you... scared? No? Well, that's good. We don't have much farther to go. I understand your legs are probably tired, as I live on the very outskirts of the town. Here, let me give you a ride. Wait, stop kicking! What is the matter with you, girl? Did I hurt you? I only meant to set you on my back so that you don't have to walk the rest of the way. Although, I understand. Most people here are not fond of being touched by... non-humans. Well, if that's not the issue, then what is? I'm not going to hurt you, I've already proven that. I'm just trying to help. Yes, it can wait, I suppose. We are nearly to my home anyway. You see the lights there at the top of the hill? That is my home. Mansion? Oh, well, I suppose in a town this small it would be considered a mansion, now wouldn't it? In reality, it's just a very old, very well-maintained house that was built for an extremely large and wealthy family many years ago. Have you ever been there? Yes? Oh, many years ago as a child. I see. Well, don't be surprised if it looks a bit... different from your childhood memories. Ah, here we are. Here, let me take your bag. Or perhaps not. I assume you want to hold on to that particular item. In any case, you're welcome to hang your things here in the entryway. There's an extra set of slippers there on the wall if you'd like. Yes? Good. Now, let's get into the main house where it's a bit warmer. We Lamias are not very fond of being chilled. <laughs> I told you it would look different, didn't I? I hope you don't mind the heat and humidity, but they are somewhat necessary for my home to be comfortable. Because I was one of the first demi-humans to help with the interrogation process, I've had quite a bit of time to adjust my home to my liking. Most of the main floor was removed so that trees could sprout and grow large from the basement, 
and the ceiling was remodeled to numerous skylights so that I had the opportunity to bask in the sun, even on snowy winter days. <laughs> However, I still have a small sitting room for two-legged visitors. This way, my dear. There. Now that we're both comfortable and warm, why don't you stop hugging that bag to yourself and relax? Like I said, just relax. Just set it on the floor. I promise no one will try and take it from you. There. Now, why don't you tell me a bit of your story? Why would your family suspect you of being a demi-human? Yes, I see. Really? That in and of itself is a bit odd for a human, yes. I understand that many humans are cast out of various social circles for illogical reasons. But from a human perspective, your attributes are a bit unnerving. No, of course not to me. Being accused of being a demi-human is a strange thing for a human family to do. But given your particular gifts, I can understand their misgivings to a certain extent. Yes, I said gifts. Having a natural way with animals and the natural world are things that most humans have forgotten. Or rather, suppressed over the years. But from childhood, you've always had that ability. Hmm. Perhaps that's why I was drawn to your particular conversation. Or to you in general. There is indeed a chance that you have talent and you have latent demi-human characteristics passed down from a distant relative. Yes, there was a time many, many years ago when humans and demi-humans lived side by side even formed families of their own. However, after various natural catastrophes, human diseases, and many deaths on both sides, humans decided that we demi-humans were the cause of all their strife, and we were then split. One side, the humans, to live in the light, and we demi-humans, cast to live in the sh shadows. But now, well, superstition still linger, but logic has come a long way since those days. <clears throat> Are there any other gifts you carry that I should be aware of? Ah, that explains why you didn't want to be picked up. You are an animal empath. Yes, that is the term we demi-humans use for that particular gift. When you can merely touch a creature and know whether it is hungry, healthy, angry, threatening, that is a rare gift indeed. You are a special human, whether you know it or not. Well, I don't know if you would be considered a demi-human, per se. More of a throwback, for lack of a better term. Your ancestors at some point were connected with our demi-human side, and the latent gifts from that ancestor has decided to come alive in you. How rare and wonderful. M my dear, why are you crying? Please, 
Did I say something to upset you? Oh. I see. You don't know where you belong now. Your human family does not want you. And you're not yet seen as a demi-human. Here. Just relax. Here, my dear. Let me sit next to you, if that's alright. Good. Now, wipe your face and take a deep breath. I'd like to try an experiment, if I may. No, no. Nothing vile or painful. Gods, you humans watch too much of that crazy stuff on television. It makes your imagination always think the worst. No, dear. I merely want to have you touch my hand and tell me what you see or feel. <laughs> yes, my dear girl, that is all. Nothing nefarious about it. Remember, I have no vouched for me, and I have a reputation to uphold here in your world. I would not dream of harming a hair on your gorgeous head. Now, here. Place your palm against mine and tell me what you feel. You can pull away at any time. I'm just a bit curious, you see. Ooh, sorry, your hand is cold. <laughs> it took me a bit by surprise, that's all. Now, <clears throat> close your eyes. And what do you sense? You feel warm? That is good. Relaxed? That is also good. Do you feel anything threatening? Or any ill intent coming from me? See? Now, can you sense anything else? You sense... Loneliness. Yes. I suppose that's correct. I spend much of my time here, alone doing research and sending reports to the higher-ups in both the human and demi-human world. Being at the tavern this evening was a rare treat for me, honestly. I do miss conversations with others. Anything else? No? Good. Then I have a proposal for you, if you'll hear me out. You will? delightful. Now, as your human family is not willing to care for you anymore, and you don't quite fit in with the demi-humans just yet, I would like to know if you would entertain the idea of staying here with me. You will. You aren't worried I'll eat you in the middle of the night, or try to hypnotise you into boiling yourself into a meal for me. <laughs> yes, you're right. You kick too much to make for an easy meal anyway. This makes me happy, dear girl. Very happy indeed. And you? Are you happy? Of course, you're relieved, although I'm amazed that you seemed so comfortable in my presence. Another of your demi-human attributes, I would say. Most humans are terrified to be in such enclosed spaces with us non-humans, but you're a bit of both, so it makes sense. My dear, are you tired? Your eyelids are drooping. Yes. 
I suppose for you it has been a very long day. Hmm. A good place for you to sleep. I don't have a bed meant for human bodies, unfortunately. However, I can help you sleep if you wish. And if you can give me permission to touch you, I promise I won't cause you any discomfort. Too tired to argue. <laughs> well, that definitely works in my favour then. Here. Sit on my lap and let me wrap around you. God's girl, you must be exhausted. <laughs> You're not even attempting to struggle this time. There. Now let me just coil around your legs and hold your body close to mine. There. How do you feel now, my dear? Warm and comfortable. Relaxed. That's very good. Not too tight. Perfect. Now. Sleep, my dear. I can move about and still not wake you. So please, get some sleep. We can discuss more about your situation in the morning. For now, we can both just relax. Relax.